Is speaking in tongues for today? Hi, welcome to Little Lessons. And is speaking in tongues for today is today's question. Well, if you ask the millions and millions of Christians all over the world who speak in tongues, they would tell you yes. And that is a fact. And you say, well, how do you know that? Well, of course, there have been surveys and studies done by this. David Barrett, who's the author of the World Christian Encyclopedia, I believe he's now with the Lord. I spoke to him one time years and years ago, but widely respected within uh, evangelical Christianity for his knowledge of, of what God was doing all over the world. He said that the, the, the Pentecostal slash charismatic camp group of Christians makes up, it comprises the largest group of Protestants in the world. And so there, there are millions. And I have uh, traveled and taught in somewhere close to 80 countries of the world over the last four decades. And man, I've run into a lot of people, a lot of Christians who say that speaking in tongues is a regular part of their prayer life and they, they, they do it all the time. I, I'm a person in that category. I, I received a, a baptism in the Holy Spirit back in 1976, and I spoke in other tongues. And I speak in tongues as part of my devotional prayer life, you know, just about every single day. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing that I really wish that more Christians could enjoy. And I believe many more Christians could if they knew about it and if they studied the scripture about it. Now, before I go into that, does speaking in tongues make you better? No. And let's just be honest. Uh, amongst the people in the body of Christ who speak in, speak, speak in tongues today around the world, you know, some of them are the most flaky people on this planet. I mean, TV preachers I'm talking about who are within the tongue speaking camp and oh my goodness, you know, you, you, you'd actually think that speaking in tongues makes you a worse person if you were just to look at the evidence of what's on TV. But I, let's not look at TV, let's, let's look at the Bible, okay? And you know, I can't imagine any Christian um, not wanting all that God might have for them, and it certainly is worth investigating from the scripture, right? Uh, I mean, this is not a hidden theme or a hidden uh, idea in the Bible. Jesus himself said that one of the signs that will follow those who believe in him is that they'll speak in tongues. So Jesus was talking about it on the day of Pentecost when the church was born. We've got about 120 people speaking in tongues. And, and you can read about it in later uh, chapters of the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit fell upon new believers and they began speaking in other tongues. And then you've got a couple of chapters in the in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians where Paul discusses speaking in tongues and he corrects some of the misuse of speaking in tongues in the Corinthian church. And so there, there is some scripture, folks. There, there are some things that, you know, are worth your while t to look into. Um, when I uh, was first baptized in that experience, that Holy Spirit baptism that I, that, that I enjoyed back in 1976. Um, it, it was the greatest experience of my life up until that point, other than the day I actually was born again and, and believed in Jesus Christ. And when I think about it, you know, what a blessing speaking in tongues has been in, in my life. Oh my goodness, I just wish that every Christian, honestly, you know, would at least look into it and ask the Lord, Lord, is this your will for me? And then go into the Word of God and try to figure it out for themselves. I have actually spoken in the Japanese language on three occasions when people were present as I was praying, they heard me praying in Japanese and they told me some of what they recognized, understood that I said, because they were either fluent in Japanese or they knew a little bit of Japanese. And so I have said at times in Japanese, things like, for example, you are so good. Well, that certainly is scriptural. God is good, right? 
And I've said thank you very much in Japanese. And I couldn't even say it right now if you ask me because I don't know how to say thank you in Japanese. I know it begins with O. Ogishoki or Ogisogi or something like that. And, um, and I've said one time in Japanese, come quickly, come quickly. I am waiting for you. Well, doesn't that sound like a beautiful prayer to be praying to Jesus? Sure, it does. Okay, so, you know, whole books have been written on this subject. I uh, have written on this subject. If you go to davidservant.com and type in there, uh, Speaking in Tongues, you'll find uh, a couple of chapters of a, a book on, that I wrote on that subject. And I'll tell you just about everything that I know. And naturally, I hope you still love me, I'm trying to persuade you to believe like me. <laughs> All right, now, I still love you. And, and it's much more important that we love each other than that we speak in tongues. If you, know, if you haven't got that figured out, you need to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We've got a lot of people in the body of Christ who have the ministry of being a noisy gong and a clashing cymbal because they're speaking in tongues, but they don't have love and respect for those who don't speak in tongues. And speaking in tongues can be abused. It was in the Corinthian church. People were speaking out in tongues and there was no translation. So Paul said, you shouldn't be doing that. You know, you're not walking in love. You're not edifying other people. Just do it privately in your own private prayer times and you'll edify yourself. You'll build up yourself. It'll be a blessing for you, but you won't be offending somebody else. Well, we, you know, we need to be always focused on love is the most important thing. But I wish, I wish, like Paul, Paul said, I wish that you all spoke in tongues. Well, so I, I wish that same thing for you. And I also know this, that it'll never happen to you if you don't think that it's something for today. I hope I've at least eradicated that thought from your mind. It's for today. And it'll never happen to you if you don't believe it's for you. And so you have to dive into the Word. And I've done what I can on our website to provide some information, okay? Anyways, but thank you for asking that question. And, you know, again, let me affirm my love for you. You look good today. All right, thanks for joining me. See you next time.